a show them and not them. No. You know, never. but I definitely did sense sort of like, a, okay, this guy cares a little bit more than the rest, you know. I, I think it's uh, it's a twinkle in your eye. Yeah. Uh, I think that you, you could see that someone shows an interest in certain avenues um, and you you try to put that tear it out there mm-hmm. and see if that person wants to really go after it or is interested in, in it um, it's like like finding finding out if uh, your, your likes and your dislikes without asking someone mm-hmm. you can tell by their their personality mm-hmm. uh, on, on something that's how I how I tell uh, about you um, but you have so many interesting s- in people in your class yeah we, all, really, we really, really did it was very diverse yeah um, do what I uh, I was in love every single day, mm-hmm. uh, literally because whether the person showed a great deal of interest or not, they always tried to give it their best that they could. They really did, yeah. Uh, and I I that was immediately I I picked up on. Um, everyone has you have to take yourself. You have good days and you have bad days, and not so good days. You have to be able to enhance the good days, prop up the not so good days to make them better. And what I always try to do is try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt and make their day better. One of the things that I like initiated is I always said good morning, and I always said good night. Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to come in with the door being open to open up to suggestions. If he had a bad day, a bad night, to try to leave him at the door. I always instill the value that of all my employees all the time. And not everyone has a perfect life. And certainly growing up, everyone has a different approach on family life. Yeah. And you have to try to separate that door when you walk through that door, that something's going to be better. It can't get any worse. Yeah. And it's not always as bad as you think it is. Um, so that was always my philosophy on those things. For sure. Sometimes they work, sometimes they didn't. You, know, <laughs> you, you hope they were, you know. <clears throat> um, was it, because uh, the way that the Votech <laughs> programs for culinary worked was sophomore, freshman did cafeteria, you know, junior, senior did the restaurant. Was that always sort of the dynamic of these classes, of these schools? No, it was different. Okay. Yeah, it was. Um, so Wilcox, was it one of its own kind of thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got you. What, <laughs> what sort of led you to make it like that? I didn't make it that way. Okay. That's the way it was programmed. Pro- okay, got you. Because the entire school was like that. Mm, that's right, that's right. So every school... Um, you have to train yourself to a different way of how they're operating that school. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it works, and sometimes you say, mm. "I don't." Yeah, <laughs> you, know, this is a, you know, it's like putting a senior in a freshman. Yeah, there's a, that's a situation if that's the way it went down because sometimes you you, you don't have. The senior doesn't have the patience to work with a, a, a younger class person. Yeah, like that, you I know? can see that, and, and I can understand that very, very well. So it's it, it, it's a little tricky sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, know? for sure. Yeah, I remember, um, you know, your the first graduating class that you had uh, name was Tina, Tina Ayala. Um, yes, she was awesome. And I remember that she would Vicka. Yeah, she Vicka. She won. Yeah. Yeah. We just uh, I just talked to her the other day. She had won 
I believe every single competition up until the last one or something like yep. that. But she was, yeah, she was, she was badass. Um, yep. Cool, cool girl. Smile. Yeah, all the time, you know. And she kept us in line. You know, I remember her like, hey, chef said not to do that. What are you doing? You know, kind of thing. Because, you know, me and Sergio were crazy. <laughs> we were just trying to get yeah. into any trouble that we could or, you know, whatever yeah. kind of side deals we had. And uh, it was it was funny having her be like, hey. You know, it was the first time in my life that I had gotten reprimanded by somebody, you know, because I didn't have any brothers or sisters that yep. ever tell me, hey, mom said not to do that. It was, you know, I always found out the hard way. But uh, it was cool having her be the first person to be like, yep. hey, respect what another elder is saying and, and letting you know that's not what you should be doing right now. Sure. And then I, that's sort of my first understanding of hierarchy. Yep. You know, and she wasn't a sous chef. She was just another student who, like you said, cared. Very and, much so. Yeah, exactly. And she doesn't even cook to this day. You know, she works in, uh, I think, Google Events. Yeah. Uh, so she's, you know, successful in her own right. Yeah. And And um, super, super happy for her. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And she um, she did go to, if I'm not mistaken. She, she went to Johnson Wales. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think she was more in the business campus. Yes. Um, yeah. And honestly, it was Chef Wongo who led us all there. Yep. Yeah. You know, because he was like, that's where I went. You know, if you want to cook or if you want to go ahead, you know, and he, he kind of let, let us know, like, it's a little bit far away from home, so you can kind of learn to be yourself, sure. you know, and all these experiences that he shared with me was what ultimately led me to be like, you know, that coupled with, I think Chef Verano thinks I can do this too, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because you were showing me all this stuff and you yeah. saw that twinkle in my eye and then... um you know, so I just took that and I was like, hey, I might as well run with this, you know, and uh, here we are years later. I, You know, one of the things is that there's no there's no perfect school for anyone. No. It's a school that you feel comfortable with. Uh, I have a lot of friends, and you had, probably had some of the teachers, George Opelinek might have been one of your teachers for Garmache or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of these teachers in Johnson and Wales I'm I'm with them once or twice a year. Yeah, uh, and we've been friends for for years. That's crazy. Yeah, for years. Um, and the same thing with CIA. There's people there. You know, I get, I had an opportunity to when I was at Eli Whitney. Um, it went in a, another scenario where um, my department had went into a hospital. Uh, he went at this for surgery, and he's the one that got me the job. Um, and he ended up dying. Mm-hmm. Going again, going in the hospital, and and we went. We were on our way. We got offered a job at Culinary Institute. Now we went for the interview before he passed away, mm-hmm. and I got the job from one of my instructors to be. In the garbage department. Yeah. Um, and I said, I can't do anything right now. I, I was, we were heading there. They found the house. They did this. They were going to move us and everything like that. I know you want to be on the Olympic team. We'll sponsor you, you know, so on and so forth. Well, my department had died. Uh, and I, they held the job open for three months. And, and so, so I made it, want to make a decision to go, and I said, I can't. I just took this job teaching. All these kids, they just lost their their department head instructor. Mm-hmm. I'm the only one left for them. Yeah. I can't leave. I couldn't leave them. My wife will testify to that. Um, I couldn't leave those kids. Uh, opportunity, 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 opportunity. I couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't do it. And I'm thankful uh, for most respect. It was a great job, great opportunity, but then I didn't let those kids down. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the whole idea to, to, to being a teacher. Yeah. It's to teach kids, not mm-hmm. to tell them the best job you get, you might as well leave. Yeah. You know? For sure. Great job, but great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you see yourself as staying at Wilcox till you were retired? Did you see another project on the horizon or were you sort of like, this is my home and 
that will stay my home until I leave this field? No, I, I, um, uh, I had offered, uh, another position while I was at Wilcox. Mm -hmm. And, um, I said, why am I going to move again, move around again? Yeah. Uh, and, um, I enjoyed it there. Uh, I enjoyed the kids. Um, and, uh, I had a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, it was a, you know, it was an accomplishment to, to be there. But I knew when, um, the time was right for, uh, to say, you know, uh, time to leave, time mm -hmm. to retire. Mm -hmm. Um, but I never retired, you know, I re retired from, from teaching. Uh, what did you do after the teach? Well, that, that, I was like a racehorse trying to get out of the stable for three <laughs> months. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I got offered a, a position to, um, a friend of mine called me up, another former chef, and yeah. another... Uh, he said, um, look, I know you're looking for something. I know he must be driving you crazy being at home. I said, how did you figure that one out? Um, he says, uh, this place is looking for a consultant part-time. I said, I don't want anything full-time. And uh, it was a, a big property in Connecticut. Um, uh, and uh, it could do anywhere between 2,000 and 10,000 people a week uh, to be a consultant um, on, on the running of the facility, food service facility. And I did it for uh, two, two years. And part-time became full-time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, it was uh, just too much. Uh, we did parties, you know, 15,000 people. Yeah. Uh, and, um, for a weekend and uh, you know things like that which I enjoyed it was a challenge I haven't done that in a long time um, and then I, I, I got off that job and um, got home again and uh, in, in between that time uh, I got a phone call and said um, Dan I want you to think about something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love this. Want to, we'd like you to come back and um, would, you, would you like to come back and, and teach you? And I said, uh, you know, uh, let me think about this. And what, 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 what does this entail? Mm -hmm. uh, and it was entailing um, teaching kids young adults who are struggling yeah. uh, in, in, in different areas. And um, I said, that would be different. I thought about it a day, and let me go in and try it a little bit, and things like that. And I did it for two, two school years. And they ended up teaching pastry was the main mm -hmm. item. Uh, it, was, it was neat. Uh, and I had a great reward because no one thinks about the student who's struggling um, with emotion or something. Yeah. We're always, people are, for the most part, and I don't blame them, um, are looking for the achievers. Well, they're achievers too. It yeah. might not be on the same plane. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. It was one of the most rewarding two years I had in teaching. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great day. I, I, um, I had a ball. Uh, and all, all the kids graduated. That's so cool. Yeah. You're like the godfather. Like every time I think I'm done, they push me back in. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't leave it. Hey, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> but that's your true passion, you know, I, and... I, uh, yeah. Once you find your true passion and you work in it, I don't think there's any going back, you know. Yeah, I, I, the one, short, one short thing. I, I had a, uh, my, uh, my daughter-in-law uh, knows one of these, this young lady, and I taught her. Mm -hmm. I, I, I taught this young lady, and, and she got married, and 
she saw my name on her 